participants uh, in thanking uh, Rector Solo, Ms. Miluna, Anastasia, Justine for inviting me and presenting my paper. I would like also to, uh, to thank my uh, supervisor, Lalita Chigana, who, who led me through the process. And I would like now to share the screen. Uh, one second. Sorry. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, um, my presentation is about out of country voting um, uh, in Estonia and Kyrgyzstan and uh, alternative as alternative voting for voters abroad. Um, uh, my chapter focuses on a comparative analysis uh, between the two countries um, and the voting procedures in, in Estonia and Kyrgyzstan. It explores how both countries uh, have elaborated uh, their legislations in terms of uh, providing uh, the rights and the rights to vote um, for citizens living abroad. Uh, Additionally, the chapter sheds uh, light on the complexity of the procedures and uh, discuss the alternative uh, ways uh, uh, for election management bodies to ensure uh, this uh, basic right uh, to vote, to be engaged in the political process. Uh, sorry, I'm like this. Um, uh, in my paper, I'm saying that the role of external uh, external voting is increasing in the globalized world uh, due to some globalization processes that include uh, includes migration uh, of inflows and outflows. And since uh, it involves migration, it it uh, it becomes like uh, this out of country voting uh, has a political nature. Uh, because people who are living or are residing outside outside of their home countries, they still feel attachment to their home countries, and voting is one of the uh, uh, one of the elements of belonging to their uh, to their uh, to their countries. Uh, that's why for many of uh, migrants, it's very important uh, to be able to vote. Um, external voting practices worldwide they vary. In some countries. Uh, some countries provide uh, the right to vote uh, outside of the country, some are not. For example, Ireland uh, only provides uh, uh, with the right to vote uh, for citizens residing abroad who are working in the embassies and consular, uh, consular offices and uh, military, military personnel. Uh, in some other countries like Afghanistan, uh, Mexico, uh, uh, Venezuela, they uh, they ensure the right to vote for citizens residing abroad on in particular type of voting during uh, parliamentary uh, parliamentary elections or presidential. So it's it's not um, uh, both cases. Um, in my paper, I also explore that. Um, the first, uh, the first mention of uh, external voting or out of country vo voting was mentioned, uh, was uh, took place in uh, 1862. It was in the U.S. Uh, when soldiers fighting in the Union Army during the Civil War were granted uh, with the right to vote, uh, it was absentee voting, and since then. Um, uh, the history elaborated, of course, uh, historically, only mil military and diplomatic personnel were allowed to vote outside of their home countries. But now, uh, due, to the, due to the globalization processes, uh, migration uh, flows, uh, uh, election commissions and countries have to adapt to ensure um, to ensure the right to vote that is in, 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 inclined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and other uh, international uh, documents and agreements. Uh, according, to, according to the UN, um, currently there are there is almost 4% of uh, the global population are migrants. And uh, the, this number is increasing. For example, in 2000, it was uh, only 2.8% 2, 2 uh, of the population, uh, of the overall population who were migrants, but now it's three, almost 4%. Um, 
and it's still it's increasing because uh, people are moving people uh, get uh, second citizenship and uh, they are still entitled to vote in their home countries i have chosen uh, kyrgyzstan and estonia because uh, because of the uh, let's say the starting point uh, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union uh, was uh, more or less the same and uh, both countries have uh, more or less the same. I mean, uh, not a big uh, population in Kyrgyzstan, it's 6 million Estonians, 1.3, but still um, uh, not a big population. Um, and since uh, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, uh, many, uh, many, citizens from Kyrgyzstan and Estonia have decided to work uh, outside of their countries and there were uh, huge uh, migration outflows from the country. Currently, um, it is estimated that uh, there are there is one million uh, migrants working, uh, Kyrgyzstani migrants working abroad. Uh, it's, it's according to unofficial um, statistics, but the official one says that it's uh, around 800,000 uh, uh, migrants, uh, which is um, approximately 12% of the population uh, who is now, that is working outside of the country and who are eligible to vote if they are 18 years old. In Estonia, it is estimated now that it is uh, 10 to 15 percent of the population uh, live abroad and uh, have the right uh, to vote. Uh, when I al analyzed the, the um, uh, legal uh, framework of both countries and both countries, yes, the out of country voting is ensured in the electoral uh, legislation in the Constitution and uh, some of the CC uh, decisions. For example, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, in uh, CC decisions, uh, every every year, electoral year, a CC issues a uh, particular decision uh, dedicated to out-of-country voting. Uh, in Estonia, it's mainly enshrined in the electoral law. Um, both countries have switched to the new model for of, uh, for electoral process. Uh, Kyrgyzstan now has uh, automatic uh, scanning ballot boxes. It's more digital, digitalized uh, since uh, 2014. Um, and in Estonia, uh, Estonia also switched to a new uh, new voting uh, model uh, in 2003. And since then, they are using internet voting, which is uh, very famous. Uh, among all electoral uh, stakeholders as an example uh, to look at. Uh, it was interesting uh, also to see that uh, Estonian citizens are also allowed to vote in, in international waters, uh, which is also uh, ensured by the electoral uh, legislation. Uh, when it comes to voting procedures, uh, I have found out that uh, in Kyrgyzstan, um, both in Kyrgyzstan and Estonia, uh, voters uh, list is passive. It means that uh, all uh, citizens who turn 18, they are automatically included uh, in the voters list. Um, however, uh, in order to vote outside of the country, uh, a person in Kyrgyzstan uh, and a person from Kyrgyzstan has to go to the consular section, has to uh, deposit biometric data and fill in application form. There is no possibility to do it online. Um, uh, and while in Estonia, uh, a voter gets electronic voter card and he can use the card uh, from uh, any part of the world to vote uh, in uh, uh, different type of elections. And uh, Estonian voters abroad have an opportunity also to, uh, to exercise uh, postal voting as well as uh, uh, physically come to the polling station and um, cast their votes. Um, they also, in Estonian legislation, it is um, ensured that uh, people, voters can actually come um, in advance of the uh, election day and uh, they have uh, several days in advance when they can cast their votes, which is actually praised by um, international observers. Um, uh, when 
if to talk about effectiveness of the voting procedures and the impact of the procedures on turnout, uh, I, I, I can say from the analysis that uh, uh, basically the 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 more opportunities, the more diverse. Um, the, the more diverse uh, legislation is in terms of providing more uh, opportunities for voters uh, to exercise their vote, uh, the, the more is the turnout. Uh, therefore, um, since Kyrgyzstan does not provide many opportunities for uh, its citizens um, uh, to cast their uh, votes online or to exercise their, their rights uh, through postal voting, uh, the the turnout uh, especially abroad is very low um, for the last two elections it was about 25 to 27 percent and if to look at the numbers uh, of registered voters abroad it's uh, it's uh, it's a tiny uh, tiny number for for example uh, and the, on the elections in October 2020 this year uh, there were 30,000 uh, registered vote voters and only 27% uh, casted their votes. Uh, however, if to compare, uh, if to look at the statistics, uh, it is estimated that there are more than 80, uh, 800,000 uh, migrants living uh, uh, in the Russian Federation, for, exa for example. Uh, and uh, the turnout is uh, very low in that sense. Uh, when it comes to Estonia, uh, the, the analysis shows that um, more and more people uh, in 2019, during after two, uh, 2019 elections, more than half of uh, the votes were cast online. Uh, and if to look at the uh, voting abroad, um, 6% of the voters abroad used online voting, but others, uh, they um, either went to the polling stations, polling stations themselves, or they uh, they used their voting, uh, postal voting. Um, yeah, and uh, if to look at the um, statistics, every year uh, in Estonia, every year, uh, the, the and the percentage of uh, people who use online uh, voting, internet voting, is increasing, uh, like 50 percent uh, since 2003. It's uh, quite an advantage, uh, quite an achievement. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, if to talk about the alternative, uh, alternative developments. Uh, for out-of-country voting. In my chapter, I have included also um, the section on COVID-19 because uh, I think it is particularly important uh, to for elect election uh, electoral stakeholders, election commissions, for the states to revise their legislation and introduce uh, postal voting uh, if there is no such an opportunity or internet voting. Uh, for, for instance, postal voting is practiced in the number of states, uh, United States, Norway, Austria, and also this year uh, there were elections in Poland and postal voting uh, was uh, used uh, quite, um, uh, qu quite um, often uh, by the voters and internet voting that is getting uh that is gets its popularity is practiced in estonia switzerland denmark and the uk despite of course despite the discourse on uh, on the cyber attacks uh, that are happening uh, during election election campaigns and uh, election tabulation and uh, uh, results and of course, meddling in elections is also can also be the problem uh, when um, introducing alternative uh, develop uh, alternative uh, voting procedures. Uh, there is also an, a question if uh, if traditional societies are will accept would accept um, this alternative uh, voting voting procedures and. Uh, like what is the time frame uh, for these traditional societies to get used to it? And uh, but in, despite this, uh, it can be the option uh, for uh, for uh, election management bodies to introduce this uh, because more and more and more people um, become digitalized, uh, like lit, uh, internet literate. 
and uh, especially du during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, during any other pandemics that you may have, uh, internet voting and postal voting can be the solution because it will save uh, it will save the budget uh, to some extent. It will uh, also ensure and contribute to uh, public health. Um, as lo uh, voters will not be queuing uh, at the polling stations and uh, they will they can do it uh, through online without uh, getting in touch with uh, election commissioners uh, and in my conclusion uh, i i wrote that uh, yes despite the fact that kyrgyzstan and estonia actually they uh, started uh, they had a similar starting point but now uh, they had different um, directions in terms of uh, providing uh, voters abroad uh, with the opportunity to vote, to exercise their uh, right to vote. Um, extending voting rights by expanding voting methods through amending electoral legislation is the path um, that democracies should be pursuing, especially uh, these days. Uh, there should be a diversification of um, choices among uh, for, uh, for, for voters. Uh, and there is a demand from a society, from citizens, uh, to introduce uh, this kind of um, alternative uh, methods of voting. Uh, for Kyrgyzstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan has to look at the, at the example of Estonia and other countries that have uh, postal voting and internet uh, voting. Um, Especially, uh, especially given that uh, the uh, the huge the, the big amount of uh, migrants are living abroad, uh, it can be the option to reach out to uh, those people uh, residing abroad. And Kyrgyzstan also has to consider eliminating administrative barriers for voting abroad because there is uh, uh, not. A lot of people, not a lot of voters, come to polling stations uh, to change their electoral address um, because I mean it's because they cannot do it uh, online, and it's uh, another uh, problem for them to come to consular or embassy uh, in different countries. Uh, for Estonia, of course, uh, they have to look, and it was written in many of the uh, international observers' uh, reports that they have to look at uh, how to better protect the system from cyber attacks uh, that become more and more often uh, the case. Um, and uh, yes, in, in my conclusion, I also made a statement that uh, internet voting, despite it raises many issues, uh, uh, among uh, electoral observers, because it's very difficult for observers to uh, to observe uh, this uh, process. It uh, raises issues um, of secrecy of voting, safety of uh, servers, and so on. Uh, however, internet voting may contribute to engagement of more voters and can uh, increase the turnout in the end. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for uh, such an interesting conclusion for today's presentations. Uh, before I uh, give floor to my colleagues, I got a message that one of our speakers has a question. So, Genghis Khan, uh, please, had a question. Uh, thank you, Anastasia, for your presentation. It's possibly the only topic I could ask a question other than mine. So it wasn't about law, but generally in politics and election. And also, uh, just out of curiosity, have you come across any survey or data about uh, the lineage of those uh, current labor migrants' uh, political voting behavior? Uh, whether if they voted, just they were voted in favor of the current uh, government or to opposition parties? Because in Estonia, I am interested because my actually main research interest relies on the labor migrants of Central Asia who lives in Russia. So uh, as you can see, like 600,000 is a huge number. So uh, even if they could establish in, in the Kyrgyzstan. So that's the first question because in Estonia, the case of ECRE, the right radical group, uh, how is it called? Conservative People's Party. Uh, they are getting uh, quite significant support from outside, 
from abroad uh, when you look at the votes and also uh, kind of far right party in Estonia is also a different topic but for Kyrgyzstan did you have come to any uh, survey come across that they will vote they will vote in favor of Yes, of, yes, I can answer that. Um, for Kyrgyzstan, uh, during the last parla uh, parliamentary elections, they were, yes, they, they had a favorite uh, party, um, which was actually very active during campaign period. And uh, most of the migrants uh, gave the vote for uh, for this particular party. It was, uh, yes, it was a opposition party. Uh, however, as you know, our elections were uh, cancelled um, and the results were cancelled by the CC. We'll see how it goes uh, in the next elections. Uh, maybe other candidates or other political parties will, uh, will look at this example that uh, actually many of, uh, many of the migrants uh, got activated and uh, they, they gave their vote, votes for one particular party. Uh, yeah, one of the examples could be also, if you can see in Moldova, yes, that uh, they vote, they voted for one candidate and most of uh, most of the vote votes came from diaspora. Yeah, as from Estonia, I haven't, um, uh, to be honest, I haven't come uh, come across uh, for whom uh, they uh, voted in particular, I mean, pro-government or opposition uh, parties, uh, because I was mainly focused on um, um, let's say uh, legal uh, framework and uh, voting procedures themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Piero, would you have a question too? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I mean, we all know that uh, uh, how topical is the issue of distance learning because we all have been intrigued by the saga surrounding, the recent saga surrounding the American election. Uh, so it's, uh, I would like to stress the big topicality of, the, of your research. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned shortly uh, COVID-19 and uh, I was wondering, uh, we are debating right now the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on human rights and also how it might change uh, our societies in a permanent way. Uh, do you think that this might have a strong impact on the modalities through which the right to vote is exerted? And if uh, the future is represented by e-voting, what, what challenges this solution posits for uh, democracies and human rights? Uh, thank you very much for this interesting questions. Um, I will start from the modalities. I think that uh, some countries and uh, mainly the countries that have managed to organize their elections during the pandemic, they they um, fastly, uh, quite fast uh, take the example and take all the best practices from each other. Uh, I can say I can say from my uh, home country, from Kyrgyzstan, they um, managed to organize polling stations. Uh, they managed to uh, provide safety measures at the polling stations, uh, and it didn't um, it didn't uh, impact the turnout. The turnout was uh, quite high, despite the fact they cancelled the result of the elections. And you can see also uh, the, uh, the, uh, the example of the U.S. elections that uh, it was the highest uh, turnout uh, in the U.S. Uh, since uh, know, 50 years. Um, I see that um, many election commissions they uh, they look. At, they look and they uh, they learn from each other, and they try to implement uh, all the measures uh, to ensure the safety of um, of the voters. And this is, I think, it should be uh, the case for many uh, for the upcoming elections in uh, different countries. And uh, as as for the challenges on e-voting, I think uh, now the challenge itself that the trend is downward. I mean, uh, globally, people do not vote, they do not participate in elections, but maybe actually I think e-voting can trigger the interest 
of younger population and uh, they can take a more active part in uh, uh, in uh, casting their vote and uh, participate in elections um, of course it will be the challenge in terms of um, in terms of cyber attacks uh, there will there will be more cyber attacks and meddling in, the, in elections but i think it will give more opportunities for younger generation to take part in political processes thank you very much eva would you also have a question to our speaker? <clears throat> uh, yes thank you for your presentation and i have a question uh, uh, could you please name once again what are the main risks of electronic voting and in a sense can it work in every society thank you thank you very much uh, uh, miss miluna uh, yes i think uh, one of the risks is that traditional societies uh, cannot um, easily acquire cannot uh, easily understand the system and it will take uh, a certain period of time to adapt to the new uh, voting procedure uh, this can be the challenge another challenge is that um, election commissions will have to uh, introduce uh, and uh, implement uh, implement civic and voter education so that uh, so that citizens voters could understand how the new voting procedure uh, works and uh, which voting procedures the uh, the country may offer uh, and this also may take time because uh, I mean civic education it always takes time uh, for uh, for citizens to understand the system to understand who how how the parties function how the candidates campaign all this kind of legal um, let's say uh, legal mechanisms um, yeah I think these two I mean two main challenges as I see as I see them. <laughs> Thank you, Eva, and thank you, Anastasi, for, for your presentation.